how to buy and sell real estate leveraging our cash, right? So many folks want to get into real estate and we're going to define what getting into real estate looks like because right now we're all in real estate. Where you're watching this right now is actually in real estate. But what people mean when they say get into real estate is deciding which side of the real estate coin or equation they're going to be on. Are you going to be an owner of real estate assets, a broker of real estate assets, a controller of real estate assets, or are you going to be a tenant and a customer of real estate assets? That's industrial buildings, commercial buildings, residential homes, that's agriculture, right? All things are real estate that come from land or sit on land. So how do we get into real estate, right? Using someone else's cash and leveraging and not worrying about our own credit, right? So one of the biggest misconceptions and what I hear all the time is, bro, I'm inspired by you. I want to get into, uh, want to get into real estate. I'm fixing my credit right, right now. Well, we're going to show you the strategy of not using your own credit. We're not even using any credit. None of your own cash. People say, I don't got the money to get into real estate. I don't have the down payments, right? We're going to show you that. We're going to show you how to do it with little to no experience. And we're going to show you how to do this as well without a license. No license needed. Right? No license needed. There's no educational level you have to reach to do this. Your background doesn't matter, right? When I was in 2005 and I was getting into real estate, they said you can't do real estate with felonies. I was coming off the street corners. I had three felonies by the age of 21 years old, and everyone said I couldn't do real estate. But I stand here in front of you as someone that has done real estate at some of the highest levels in the country. So let's go debunk all these myths and get into our lesson. So most people are going to say, all he's talking about is wholesaling real estate. Well, let me put you onto some game and elevate your mind and you're going to learn today. So there is a strategy called wholesaling real estate which is a basic strategy um, that many use, many preach, many teach, many execute that allows you to do no money down real estate, right? Allows you to do real estate without using your credit as a real estate broker of sorts. We're going to talk about that in a second. But let me tell you the problem with wholesaling real estate. And let me show you for those of you who are new to this, what wholesaling is. So it's, it's a great concept. And mind you, my first wholesale deal I did back in 2005. So I'm not new to the concept, but let me tell you the flaws in the concept coming from a real estate specialist and expert. So wholesaling real estate is very simple. Uh, you as a potential real estate entrepreneur, you're going to say, I want to get into real estate. I don't want to use my credit. So we know we don't want to use our credit, right? No credit. We all agree. We want to build our credit and use it later on or use it for other things. We know that we don't want to use our cash, right? We know that we don't want to use a license. We know we want to do it despite our education and background, right? And we want to do it if we have little to no experience. All that's fine. So how you do that is you as a real estate entrepreneur will learn how to market and find properties, contract those properties, which gives you the purchase rights to the property, the rights to purchase it, exclusive purchase rights. So no one else can purchase it but you. And then as what they call a wholesaler, which I hate that term because wholesalers are crumb snatchers, but as a wholesaler or real estate investor wholesaling, you then assign that contract over to what's called the end buyer, many times a cash buyer or investor, right? That end buyer is going to pay you a fee, right, for taking over your contract. So they now pay you a fee and they inherit your contract, your purchase contract. And now they do the deal directly with the seller. Simple. A great way to earn revenue, create cash out of thin air. I'm an advocate of the strategy. But now let me tell you what's wrong with wholesaling real estate. All you guys can do this. You can literally find a property, commercial, residential, put a contract on it, run your numbers, negotiate, Find cash buyers or end buyers, 
Give them your contract, essentially sell your contract and make money out of thin air. Great. But there's some flaws in this strategy that none of the gurus teach. None of the new real estate entrepreneurs teach, right? So I'm going to give you some wisdom and experience, and then I'm going to give you some solutions to how we level up from wholesaling because at the end of the day, wholesaling is cap. Literally. So here's the problems with wholesaling real estate. We'll take this off right here. Our problem with wholesaling Take your notes, notepads out, guys, right? I need you guys notepads, pens, napkins, tablets, whatever you got, and you take notes because you learn better and you retain more information when you write. So the problem with wholesaling real estate, one, is that you lose your negotiating leverage with the seller. So Jay, what do you mean by that? What I mean by that is, think about it. If you're the seller of a property, and someone that doesn't have any cash, doesn't have any credit, might be new, has no license, wants to come in and contract your property, you have very little leverage to stand on, especially someone new, and probably minimal confidence, to get this seller to drive their price down, because the lower you get the property, the more profits you can make. So imagine if you can come into this property with more leverage, right? Leveraging our cash and you're a real cash buyer. Don't you think you have a better chance to drive this price down as a cash buyer versus a wholesaler or someone that's looking to just contract this property and sell to someone else? You instantly lose leverage opportunities with your seller. Two, you lose leverage and pricing opportunities with your buyer as well. Think about it again. As a wholesaler, crumb snatcher, you're contracting a property, now you want to essentially sell it to the buyer, right? Well, if I'm the buyer on the other end, and I know you have no skin in the game, and I know you might be new in the industry, and I know that you don't have uh, much leverage when you say, hey, I want $10,000 or I want $30,000 or $50,000 for you to take over this property, I'm instantly as a buyer going to look to out leverage you and out posture you. And what I might do is say, okay, or maybe not me, but what buyers, what many buyers do is say, okay, and they'll tell you they'll give you 30 grand for your contract. And then when you get the day before closing, the day of closing, they say, you know what? I'm not going to close today. 30 grand is way too much. I'll give you 15 though. And now you're stuck because you have a deal with the seller. Now you're stuck last minute deciding if you're going to actually take 15K and a $15,000 loss or blow up the whole deal. And now you're counting on that money you had already had it spent in your head and the buyer out you. They out-negotiated you and they out-leveraged you because as a wholesaler, you had limited posture and position, right? So that's another thing as a, as a wholesaler why there's a problem with this strategy. Now, thirdly in that strategy, you can't maximize your assignment fee. What do I mean by that? Outside of getting negotiated down as a wholesaler, think about this. Psychology is real. The human mind is real. So if, again, same scenario, here you go. You're going to the buyer and you're saying, listen, I found this property for 70 grand, 70K, K means thousand. I found this property for 70,000, Mr. Buyer. The property is worth, though, 150,000. Okay, well, all I want you to do, Mr. Buyer, is give me 30000 and I'll give you my contract. So you'll be all in $100,000, my thirty dollars plus a seventy, 
and then you can sell it for 150. Here's the issue. As a wholesaler, crumb snatcher, you have to ask someone and barter with someone to sell your contract to them for a fee. In human psychology, every savvy end buyer, which is usually a cash investor or an investor that's been around the block a few times, they're going to look at you and say, what the hell did you do to deserve 30 grand off this deal? And I got to invest my hard earned money that I built up in this industry to give you 30 grand. And then you got to go through that whole haggling process of trying to get 30 when you might have been able to get 40 or 50. But as you go up in assignment fee, say this deal is not 70,000, but it's 700,000. You're out in Cali now and you're doing a $700,000 single family that's worth 1.5 million. And you want your assignment fee to be 300,000 now. So you're saying to a buyer, hey, I got a $700,000 property. It's worth 1.5 million. Give me 300,000 for it. It's never going to happen. No one's going to pay you $300,000 for you to just receive in between a transaction with them making 1.5 million, even if it makes financial benefit for them. Human nature won't let them. The whole time they're going to be counting your pockets. It's going to pain them to watch you walk away with so much money. They're going to think of every way to get you down on your 300 because they're looking at that's more money that they could have made. Human nature, jealousy, envy, ego, greed, all that is always going to make an end buyer look to negotiate you down on a fee that you disclose that you're making so much money on a deal for a property you found that you put no credit up and no money up. But I'm going to show you how to get around that, right? Four. Respect. Posture. Positioning. In the real estate industry, being a real estate wholesaler is often frowned upon and smeared. It's often looked at as being a scam or being shady or being unethical. In the real estate industry, ask realtors. Ask the real estate commission. Ask title companies. Ask lawyers. It's often frowned upon to represent yourself as a wholesaler in the industry. So much so, five, that it's even illegal in Ohio and in Chicago, uh, in Illinois. In other states to come, at least two states, it's illegal to wholesale real estate. They changed the laws, partly because the Real Estate Commission has lobbied with governments to state governments to change the laws because so many people will be getting duped and scammed from this wholesaling process. And because real estate agents and real estate brokers and a real estate commission has been missing out on so much money since wholesaling has exploded on the scene. Because most of these people used to be realtors and brokers, right? So you got that component of real estate wholesaling and why there's a problem with it in the industry. Not to mention you can't even maximize your profits and the other things that we, just, we, we uncovered, all right? So now let me give you a solution to the problem. A good teacher will identify the problem and then also give you a solution. So we showed that there's a way to get around no credit, no cash, no experience, no license, no high education level, right? GED, high school dropout, whatever, doesn't matter. And we showed that you can do wholesaling, but there's some flaws in your opportunity, right? In wholesaling a deal, wholesaling a transaction, right? There's just some flaws there. So now let's get to solution time. What we did is create a strategy and program. We didn't create the strategy, we created the program, which is called a double closing, right? And this is a cash double closing. So this is done, when it's done right in the ethical way, where you now elevate from wholesaler to cash buyer, right? And before we actually do this, let me take one step back. We'll come right back to this. One step back. This is an important game I want to give you. 
In real estate, we talked about that hierarchy. There's such things as brokers in real estate. Write this down, please. In your broker class of real estate, you have your bird dogs or your number 14, we call it. A bird dog in real estate is someone that just asks for a fee, not an assignment contract, assignment fee, but someone who just wants a fee for referring you to a property. Hey, bro, I've seen a property over there. A little old lady is losing it. If you give me $500, you know, if you, if you close on it, give me $500. Give me a couple, a couple of dollars. So bird dogging is essentially identifying and pointing out opportunities. You're not involved contractually, but you're asking someone for a referral fee because you were out in the field hunting like a bird dog, right? You're hunting for opportunities to bring to other investors. They give you a referral fee. The lowest on a totem pole of real estate. 13, wholesaling, what we just explained. Once again, you are a broker, you are a middleman or woman, there's no license, there's no professional designation, you're out there getting how you live. And again, it's a great strategy, great way to make money, but it's capped. For, uh, 12, being a realtor or loan officer. A realtor loan officer, again, are brokers of real estate. They make money off transactions, but they do so, right, with a license, with a designation. Realtors get a commission when a house is bought or sold, right? These are your brokers in real estate. Then you have like this next class of real estate. And this next class are your owners in real estate. So there's your broker class and there's your owner class. Your owners are your homeowners, your landlords, right? Those who rent properties. You got your house flippers. You got your cash buyers. You have your tax lien and auction buyers. You have your multifamily syndicators, people that buy apartment complexes and syndicate deals. And then you have your commercial real estate developers, right? Again, I'm giving you guys the hierarchy of real estate. And I'll write it here for you. This is the hierarchy of real estate. This is how you play the game at the highest level in all the positions that fall within our industry as real estate entrepreneurs. Now, as we get up here, we then get to private lenders, right? This right here. I'll write on the outside. This is, your, this is your controllership class. This is the highest level. You got brokership, you got ownership, and you have controllership. Your controllers in real estate are your private lenders. They're your real estate note buyers, mortgage-backed securities. We call it MBS. We'll teach you more about that in the future. Then you have your fund managers and REIT managers. And then you have number one, the number one highest position you can play in the real estate industry in the hierarchy is your bankers. Bank chairman, CEO of the bank, running the bank, a bank owner. Banks are most of you guys watched the movie The Banker with Samuel L. Jackson. That whole movie is called The Banker, but it's about real estate. It's a movie called The Banker, and the whole movie is about real estate. This is how the game is played at the highest level. On this chart, I've done everything but two things. I've never been a bird dog, 
I just skipped over that. That was just beneath me, quite honestly. And I've never been a banker. Not yet. On my way. On this entire chart, and we're about to close on our first mortgage note portfolio. I've done every single thing in this hierarchy, in real life. This is how I know, because I actually lived it all. Realtor, loan officer, broker, homeowner, landlord, tax lien, auctions, multifamily apartments, commercial real estate development, standing in one of our buildings right now, done all these things on this list. So when it comes to wholesaling we were talking about, which is the solution to that everyone thinks of not buying properties cash, or using your credit, there's something called a cash buyer I'm gonna break down to you. Wholesaling is capped. Wholesaling, when you see yourself as a wholesaler, I don't mind the strategy of wholesaling. That's different than entering the industry as a real estate entrepreneur where all you think of yourself as a wholesaler. When it's all this you can be. You should always see yourself as a real estate investor, and as a real estate entrepreneur that uses wholesaling as a strategy, but with your eyes wide open for every single thing else you can be in the industry, all the way to the highest level. Stop capping yourself with get, get rich quick, get money fast schemes and low level thinking of wholesaling. You should always be thinking about and thinking past brokership, always thinking about ownership and then past ownership to controllership. That's how you play real estate at the highest level. And that's what my community in particular has been missing. So now let's talk about how you buy and sell real estate with no cash and a limited experience, etc. So we talked about the opportunity and uh, the solution, right? And being a cash buyer. So here's what we figured out. You have a strategy called deal double closing, right? Deal cash double closings. Which essentially is but I don't want you to see it through the eyes of a wholesaler, not a crumb snatcher. I don't want you to see it through the eyes of a runner, of a middleman. I want you to see it through the eyes of a owner. Okay, this is what's different. So think about the strategy of wholesaling, same setup. You're gonna go out, you're gonna drive for dollars, put up bandit signs, use tech softwares, email campaigns, skip trace, referral sources, filter sources, and you're gonna find off-market distressed properties and motivated sellers. Cool, we'll teach you that. You find these motivated sellers, but imagine now, here's the, here's the, here's the big thing. Imagine now, you have our fund, TREF, and other partners we are aligned with, Imagine now you are backed by literal cash in your transactions. So now there's no more assignment fees. Assignment fees are dead. Wholesaling is cat. Now you approach this seller with what's called a proof of funds letter, a POF, that says you have millions of dollars of cash to buy their property. Question to you. Do you think that you would get a better price with millions of dollars of cash to negotiate with this seller or a better price saying, hi, I'm a wholesaler and I like to contract your property and assign it to somebody else later? What gives you more leverage and opportunity to drive this price down with this seller? Hey, I'm a cash buyer. My name is Jay Morrison from Morrison Real Estate Group. We're a cash buying firm and we're buying assets in your neighborhood and we'd like to give you an offer. Or hey, I'm a wholesaler named Jay Morrison and I want to contract your property. That's one thing. You drive down your best price, get the best price on this opportunity. Leveraging the proof of funds letter, but not just a piece of paper and a letter, but the actual cash. Now, you're never good, you're not gonna do this to the seller, I mean to the end buyer, 
and say, hey, can I assign my contract to you? Can I sell my contract to you? Please, can you give me some money for this contract? Because I'm trying to make money out of thin air. Why are we begging for? Why are we even positioning ourselves like that? Why are we hoping? Why are we giving them the opportunity to even negotiate and count our pockets? Most of you guys are from the neighborhood. Think about this. Take Gucci belts. If it costs $13 to make a $700 Gucci belt, think about it. If Gucci came to you and said, hey, I got a belt we manufactured for $13. I want you to give me $687 fee for my belt. You were like, get the hell out of here. Why would I give you a $687 fee for a $13 belt? But when Gucci repositions themselves and repostures themselves, never tells you how much they spend on the product. This is the product. The house is the product. In real estate, our product is the assets. That's our inventory. But when Gucci comes to you and says, yo, I got a dope belt that everybody loves and it's 700, it's trending, all the rappers got it, you're more prone to consider the Gucci or Louis or Hermes or Birkin bag. Not knowing that Birkin, for the bag that Birkin is selling to you for $30,000, that Birkin only spent 700 to make the bag. It's all about posture and positioning. So what we do is we recreate our posture and positioning by getting rid of the assignment fee, getting rid of the sell and the ask, and now if this property is $70,000 and we know it's worth $150,000 and we really want a $30,000 assignment fee, we never got to ask for a fee. We simply, knowing we're going to buy this property cash, we just tell the seller, hey, I got a $100,000 house for you. It's worth $150,000. Do you want it? Yes or no? Because if not, I'm going to the market with it. That's it. No explanations, no stories. This is the price for my property. The seller doesn't know anything about your deal. The end buyer doesn't know anything about your deal with the seller, nothing about your price, nothing about your contract. Do you want this at this price, yes or no? See, I have to be honest, I'm a little biased in this, right? Again, my first wholesale deal was in 2005. I'm not new to this. I've wholesaled hundreds of thousands of dollars of transactions. My students, my, my star protege, Isaac Grace, my partner, has done over 100 transactions, 1.2 million in wholesaling. Nothing wrong with it. But I recognize that it's middlemaning. I recognize that it's brokering. I recognize that it's crumb snatching. I recognize that it's runner, it's runner work. And I'm biased because ever since I came off the porch at 15 years old and started transacting in the streets, I always wanted to play any game I was in at the highest level. I never wanted to be somebody's runner. I never wanted to be a pawn. I never wanted to be a broker. I never wanted to be a middleman. It wasn't my thing. I always wanted to be the top dog, the banker, the highest of the hierarchy, the plug, the connect. That's how my mind thinks. I'm sorry for imposing my big, hairy, scary, bodacious ambitions on you because I want you to be greater than a wholesaler greater than a crumb snatcher, greater than a middleman. That's not my life. Yes, you can make millions wholesaling. Applause. But can you make billions wholesaling? No. There's not one billion dollar wholesaler in the entire freaking world. Billion dollar bankers, billion dollar fund managers, billion dollar private equity firms, billion dollar note buyers, billion dollar commercial developers. Wholesaling is cat. When you talk about levels. So all I know in my real life is levels. And I want to impose that mindset on you. Yes, we start off small sometimes and we'll scratch our way and we'll crumb snatch our way. Yes, I'm snatching crumbs so I can make a loaf. I'm not snatching crumbs to be a crumb snatcher forever. Because snatching crumbs gives me a big chain. I'm thinking about levels and legacy. How can I create something that lives past my last name? Something that's infinitely scalable. That's what we're talking about today. So your opportunity is to start to 
Now, position yourself as a simple buyer, cash buyer, and a simple seller. Doing cash double closings, or what we call same day flips. You're literally buying the property and flipping the property. And you do this, and I'll break it down to you. Mind you, you got leverage now with the seller, you got leverage now with the buyer, now you can get your same $30,000 without the buyer ever counting your pockets. With respect from your title agents, with respect from your realtors, respect from the sellers, not doing it illegally, not taking the end buyer's money and trying to secretly do a double close behind the door and table without him knowing or her knowing and trying to use the end buyer's money to buy with the seller and you make this money in between doing a secret title deal that's unethical and illegal. I'm not talking about illegal double closings because I don't want you to go to jail. I've been there before, I've been to prison. It's not fun. Chow's up at 6 a.m., lights out 10, 8, 10 p.m. I ain't talking about county jail, I'm talking about real jail. We want to avoid that by doing ethical transactions and legal deals. So, here's how we get there and how we get you there. It's very simple. When you guys find those properties and you find those buyers, we have a website to offer you the cash. Now think about this. No down payment. We start at 1% interest. 1% interest rate. No employment check. No bank statements needed. Limited and even no experience needed. All to do a cash deal and we'll loan you, we will lend up to $3 million any given day. 365 or 366 on a leap year. So we'll lend up to $3 million per day to fund your real estate double closings same day transactions. The website for that is cash double closings.com. Now, some of you are saying, wait, Jay, it sounds good, but how the hell do I do all the other stuff? Well, we solved that too, because we're critical thinkers. We want to teach you guys and we want to coach you guys for one full year. One full year of exclusive, private group coaching. That's right. Well, what do you get in that year? Well, you're going to get five live lessons weekly. You're also going to be a part of our CBA, Cash Bar Academy, Student community of thousands of students just like you who want to partner on deals, JV on deals, network and study with you. Obviously, you'll get access to, our, or to the cash. You also get our full curriculum. Full curriculum. Uh, Self-learning. I kind of wrote it backwards. <laughs> You can learn by yourself. This is an online curriculum, right? This is in addition to our five live lessons per week where we do conference calls and Zooms. Most of this is done on Zoom, video chat. With live Q&A, ask all questions you want. Oh, we're going to give you the tools, the resources, right? Your checklist, all the softwares that we use, we're going to give you access 
and referrals for the softwares. All this in our one year private coaching, we're gonna set you up, and mind you, to, to be in transparent. We want to set you up to win so that you borrow more money, so we can loan you more money, so we can get our 1% interest in our points for partnering with you. On some deals, it's more than 1%, and we'll partner with you on a deal, depending on the transaction, our exposure, and our risk. All that's just doing good business. But we're setting up this coaching program for you to win, and this coaching program we're gonna give you access to, I'm gonna show you where to get it, and what your investment is. You get this entire year, right? Full year of coaching. And we have so many student testimonials that have just done phenomenal for themselves. My, one of my brothers came home from prison, seven years in prison off a 10 year sentence. Started with $2,700 and has now flipped it to over $27,000 using these strategies. So we're going to give you one full year of coaching, right? For $9.97 for the entire year. Or, because we know it's not accessible and affordable for everyone, especially in this climate, or you can make payment plans at 97 per month, which gives you access to the full curriculum, to the student community, to the resources, the tools, the technology, support daily, Monday through Friday, on a live Q&A, lessons and calls, and so on, walking you through. So even if you get unmotivated and you need accountability, three weeks later, we're right there. Three months later, you fall off, we're right there. Six months in and you've been BSing, we're right there. Eight months and you just put the course aside and forgot about it, we're still right there up to a full year, 12 months. All you got to do is get with it and find out how do I negotiate these deals? How do I find the deals? We'll show you, we'll give you the list. How do I negotiate? We, we, we do role playing, we do scripts. Every question you have outside of your fear of actually doing something, we can help you with. We can meet you part of the way for you to be able to do this at Cash Buyers Academy .com. This is your limited opportunity to get into our program starting as little as $97 per month, save $167 by paying for the year to savings of $176 on your year tuition, or 67, excuse me, I think it is. But here's your opportunity for you guys to not only learn wholesaling and be a crumb snatcher. Crumb snatching's fine if we're gonna make a loaf. And making a loaf is fine if we're going to make a bale. And making a bale is fine if we're going to put it in a warehouse. And having a warehouse is fine if we're going to put it on our own land. Like, that's how we should be thinking, is levels. So this is your opportunity to be able to learn how to buy and sell real estate, leveraging our cash, and get access to the cash, and learn it for as little as $97 per month for coaching. Not a pre-recorded online course, not blurry, repurposed Zooms, but nightly and daily interactions, a private student community, and all that we've been offering, bundling up the ability to create cash, and then in our future courses, we're gonna show you how to keep cash, grow cash, protect the cash, and then pass it on to your heirs through intentional instructions and estate planning. That's how you build legacy. And I've done all that in real life. So again, I want you guys to grow in the hierarchy of real estate. My name is Jay Morrison, CEO and founder of the Jay Morrison Academy, twice over Inc. 5000's number 588, fastest growing company in the country, top 10 educational company in the country, CEO and founder of the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, the largest and uh, first black-owned real estate crowdfund in the history of America. Also co-founder with my wife, Ernestine Morrison, of the beautiful Black House in Black Mecca, Atlanta, Georgia, a 2.6 acre campus, 30,000 square foot building, five miles from the world's busiest airport, Hartsfield, Jackson, Atlanta International Airport, right? Two miles from Tyler Perry Studio. This is real estate and assets we've built and developed in real life. And I want to show you how to go from crumb snatcher and wholesaler up to fund manager and banker. You got to start somewhere. Join our course today, cashbuyersacademy.com, and I look forward to being your mentor. Peace.